this is all well and good for multiples of three. Mm. How does he deal with numbers like eight and things? What's the way, where are we going? Oh, eight. I have no idea how he'd do eight. I have no idea how he'd do eight. That was the one that actually I had trouble visualising. Because eight is two times two times two. And I kind of figured the fact that he's got three times two, the fact that two really is like two n, so it's a line, it doesn't have a shape. So you could do 10, 10 is a pentagon on a pentagon, reversed, okay? And that's easy to understand. But yeah, I, it, for that, I, you're oh, very good. <laughs> no, that, that, was just, that, that was just a random choice, I wasn't being clever. No, no, but that's actually a really good point because I, I couldn't understand. People will like pick up a guitar or, you know, get on the piano and play a tune. He's doing that with maths. He's just having fun. So much knowledge and uh, it, re research endeavours now are dependent on being collaborative and on teams of people or groups of people working together. Mm. Doesn't there need to be some standardisation though? If everyone has their own way of representing numbers, how do two mathematicians communicate? <laughs> Well, there is a standardised way of representing numbers, and we're, we're and that's what we do. But the I think the thing is is that you know maths is an evolving thing. Our understanding of maths is, is always evolving. And the the classic example is the fact that ancient Romans considered wrote numbers a certain way, and it was limited because they didn't have zero. And then the Arabic number system that we use now is superior. Okay, there's no way you could imagine uh, pi with Roman numerals. I mean, that's ridiculous. But you can do it with Arabic numerals and it's beautiful, it makes sense, and you can memorize it like I have 100 digits. So the, the point is, is that, you know, like, who knows where this is gonna go? Who knows where this kind of playing goes, this playing with, with numbers and trying to understand numbers? Because, you know, if you, one of the great things about mathematics is like something like, um, like Pythagoras' theorem, okay? Pythagoras' theorem is an established result, okay? But if you find a new way to prove it, that's new maths, okay? It's not necessarily the result that's always important. It's the tools and the paths that we take. Like if you, if you find a new way to solve an, an established problem, maybe that, that way of, of solving will, will open up problems that we just don't know about, things that we've never seen before. So, you know, this, is, this looks like not much, you know, it's just triangles. But this is a kid playing, you know, he's just playing with a Meccano set or a Lego. He uses triangles, he uses other shapes too though. He uses what, pentagons and... Well, I'm assuming he does. He didn't have them in that particular report. But, you know, the fact that it's a triangle because he's dealing with, with the prime three. But if you deal with the prime five, it's a pentagon. It's a mind at play. Uh, joyfully at play and uh, and that's what attracted me to it that's why I that's why I wanted to work it out I wanted to work out why they don't, and you know it's like well you know I, th I thought I was a pretty smart kid but I never thought to do anything like that you know I'd try and learn hard stuff and here he was just getting easy stuff and thinking about it in a new way which is what you need to do really you know, if you want, if you if a problem is is resisting a solution um, for a long period of time, perhaps it needs to be thought about in a different way. One more thing I wanted to say about this: uh, this average gap we've discovered was log n, uh, and I said it was an average. So sometimes you get bigger than that. Sometimes you get a twin prime. You know, you make an average of it, you get log n. The gaps do have bounds on them. You can't go as big as you like.